publicly on camera. Okay, we're live on camera. Um, so not being drawn into conflict or being piggy in the middle. Uh, I just want to put a bit more of a take on it. You know, like sometimes people will try and pull you into their dramas. And, um, and yeah, so often the thing is, uh, uh, as, you, as, you, as you transcend, do the spiritual work around them, forgiveness, placing them in God's infinite light and love, feeling the feelings. Um, you will uh, the ability not to get hooked into dramas. Also, the thing of like there's more. There tends to be more power and more miracles when you don't get pulled. In, you allow yourself to get pulled into drama. So if you can, I mean, what's come to me practically speaking is you try and find ways of uh, uh, like I did with my mother. Try and find ways of being like a, a little bit like a spiritual samurai, so you don't have to get involved. Sometimes it would be like leaving, sometimes it will be like uh, changing the topic, sometimes it will be, even I would do things like stay silent and say it's like I haven't got, there's no reaction coming out of me. The thing I would say is, um, but I did want to say something in terms of uh, really, really important about spiritual discernment and who you're dealing with. And that is that when you're, um, when, when you're, um, there is a spiritual discernment I have with everyone I meet. And this has come through years, and this is the thing that I was taught with Hawkins, which really, really helped me. And it does take time if you're new to doing this, and it's around kind of, it's like, is the person above integrity or below integrity? That's the only thing. That's the only thing. When I meet a new person, um, I am listening. I'll show, I'll show you what happens with me. It's not really mental, but it's like I'm looking if it seems intuitively the person is selfish, uh, the person, you can, you can pick that up through their languaging, you can pick it up also, I'm in a lot of 12-step uh, addiction recovery programs, lots and lots of them. So you get the spiritual discernment, uh, you know, are they a drug addict, are they a food addict, are they a gambler, are they a sex addict, are they a, a codependent, are they a love addict? And all people who are in different addictions, or love, if they're in love addiction, you can pick up something. If they're codependent, you start to, if, as they start to speak, you, uh, you realize it's not really a mental thing, because there's lots of years of experience. You know, this person can't wait to get to the pub, this person can't wait to get to the all, uh, eat as much as you want buffet restaurant, this person can't stop about how the, their partner hasn't texted them for five minutes. And so they're, they're feeling really, really distressed because they haven't got a text for five minutes. And as you, as you do this, you suddenly realize this person is not, hasn't got at least the minimum spiritual connection, which is what I'd call integrity, uh, and accepting responsibility for their lives to work on these things. And they're mired in these illusory, very strong concepts. So as soon as I pick that up, intuitively, uh, I'll say this, it doesn't sound very spiritual, but uh, for me, that person, I will keep as, unless they choose at some point to take spiritual responsibility, which is different. But if they want to maintain those dramas going on and they're not willing to take spiritual responsibility, I will reduce or avoid contact with them because they haven't yet reached that point. So basically anyone who's not taking spiritual integrity or has, who's in some kind of dependency or addiction and is not choosing either therapy or a spiritual program to release that stuff. Uh, I, I say they're below integrity. They are naturally a drain on everyone they meet. You know, they'll always be trying to be in a victim position. They always want emotional nurturance. If uh, they'll always want something, they'll always want to take. They want to take more, and they want to take more, and they want to take more. And as you give them more and try and be more nice to them, they'll still take more, and it will not be enough. So. I let God deal with them, you know, uh, and I will try and make up a polite excuse why I haven't got uh, uh, that much time for them. I'll even say things, and, you know, this might sound funny for, for someone who's talking about spirituality, but, you know, I'm quite busy this week, I haven't really got much time to speak with you, um, actually, uh, or, you know, I'm actually quite unavailable, it might be good if you go somewhere else, uh, so whatever it is because I know that this person hasn't yet accepted. They're on their, on their journey of accepting responsibility for their stuff. Their energy field is that of just taking. How can I, 
I used to be in that energy field. I was an addict. So it's like, how can I get something from this person? How can I get more? How can I unload my negative emotions and just dump on you for three or four hours and then next week come and dump some more stuff on you? Or, you know, how can I take from you? So that's the thing. So for me, they need to, they, you know, I leave them up to God. And, uh, and for me, the discernment is let God deal with them, let me get out of their life. My discernment is not how to completely get out of their life and let God deal with them. If they're like, um, people I like speaking or people who like, who are actively, and especially like people who are vigorously taking spiritual responsibility for their lives and letting things go, they usually have a very, very positive energy. Uh, you know, they're working on letting go of resentment and anger, grievance, or they're letting, they want to be in the observer. And you feel like they, they're like what I call spiritual radiators. You actually feel good around them. Or spiritual groups which are focused on releasing stuff. You know, like uh, where, where people are very spiritually dedicated, being in those groups, wonderful. There's like unleash tons of infinite energy. I mean, I wouldn't want to go to a victim moaning group. That for me would be like, let's all moan about our problems and say how everyone else is bad in the world for like three hours. <laughs> so, so, so that would be a place like, no, no, thank you. I won't join you for the, for the victim moaning group. It's like, let's take responsibility and transcend all our crap group. Is more the group I want to be. So, those, so that's the spiritual discernment which comes. And in the beginning, you might not know who you're dealing with. But generally speaking, I get that. But that's the thing. Like, people who want to take... Like, if I say to someone who's taken spiritual responsibility for them, you know, usually you can speak to them and they'll accept that they had a part uh, to play. And, and they'll look at their own thing. And you can have a decent conversation with them. I mean, it doesn't mean you might not get angry, they might not get angry, but you say, actually, I was wrong, uh, you know, that I was inappropriately angry, I apologise, and they'll say, look, yesterday, I shouldn't have had both donuts, so I, I'll try not to do that again in the future. So, that's the thing on, um, generally speaking, I, you know, this is going to sound thing, because I'm, I'm of a certain school, I'm not saying there's a right or wrong, but I'm more into trying to avoid dramas, trying to uh, uh, avoid things and transcend them within myself, then get in, the, get in the ring and try and spiritually help people. So like this group, I like the Course in Miracles, like let's, you know, it, it's meaningless, it's whatever. It doesn't mean I won't stand up for something or won't talk about something, but I only do that if I feel the universe is asking me, you have to do that. Or if it's like, you know, someone wants an argument and I can say, look, I have to go now. Bye-bye. I've got a deadline to meet. I'll leave them. And just like, just release on the anger I felt and release on the meaning that I picked up. And, hope, and I also feel that if I have an in, like a bad interaction with someone, I, I think, you know, if I can transcend it, I often feel that I won't have to meet them again. Because the universe goes, you've transcended that lesson. You know, because the universe is going to keep sending that person back to me mm. until I've transcended everything. And then it's like, you know, and I had this, I wrote a story in my book, Book Proof Peace, about how this woman kept coming to a, gr a group that I used to go, a spiritual group to, and we'd have these interactions. And it was the day I, and many people have had it, the day I felt like complete forgiveness for her and like total being at peace. She came up to me in that group said, you taught me a great spiritual lesson, got to let you know I'm leaving the country. And it was like, yeah, I've 100% transcended everything with that person. And they're now the universe says, you no longer have to deal with this person. And then they left. So that was full transcendence of the thing. So um, the, the Holy Spirit will give you a way of not having to get hooked into dramas. Uh, you know, surrendering dramas and people out there is my, but I'm not saying that's right for everyone and some people will like to get in and, and be like a, what I call a spiritual policeman uh, in situations where there's, there, there is thing. But I think there's also great power, that, I'm not saying that that's wrong, I think there's great power in transcending what you see in the world as being wrong, brings light into the world as well, it's another route. Um, and, uh, okay, I'm kind, okay, so, put